literally think that I'm just gonna like speak and then somehow, yeah. That's kind of where I'm at at the moment, okay. Hi everyone, so with the crazy times that we're going through at the moment, I thought that I would make this video series to help you out with some self-tape tips that I have come to learn throughout the years of doing self-tapes and filming. Through this video series, I'm gonna go through pretty much four basic videos about camera setup, lighting, audio, and editing. So we're gonna follow the process through the filming all the way through uploading your finished video to the internet. In this first video, we're gonna be dealing with camera settings and framing. If you're just starting out, you're probably using a DSLR, a camcorder, or an iPhone. With a DSLR and camcorder, you get a little bit more control over your image, but with an iPhone, a lot of these things are already pre-programmed into the camera. There are some apps that you can buy so that you can control this on the iPhone, but if you don't want to use those, that's absolutely fine. The DSLR and the camcorder may have different places where these settings might be, but they're still the same settings regardless of what camera you use. Even the iPhone uses these settings automatically. If you want a little more control over your image, switch over to manual and follow along with this video. The three main things for when you're shooting in manual to think about are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. All three of these control how much light is actually hitting the sensor on your camera. With ISO, you're controlling the overall light touching your sensor at any given time. The lower you are in ISO, the less light is coming into your sensor. With a higher ISO, the more light. I usually prefer anything less than 1600. Once you get over 1600, you're going to start getting grainy images. Shutter speed is how fast your shutter opens and closes to allow light to hit your sensor at any given time. With a higher shutter speed, the less light is hitting my sensor and the choppier my image is gonna look. With a lower shutter speed, the more light is gonna hit your sensor, but the smoother your image is gonna look. A good way to show how this works is moving your hand in front of the frame. Right now I have a shutter speed of 500, and as you can see it's very choppy. You can see where my hand is at any second during the video. Now when I change my shutter speed to 1 30th of a second, you can see that there's a lot more motion blur in the image. This is truly a personal preference, and it's more of an artistic preference than it is a technical preference, but it does help you get the image that you want. Aperture controls how much depth of field is in focus. So if I'm on a lower aperture, a very small portion of the image will be in focus, but if I'm on a larger aperture, more of the image will be in focus. For self-tapes, I usually like to keep it around 2.8 if you have the ability to do this. Two other things that I wanna go over in this video are recording format and white balance. A lot of cameras start out with auto white balance, but if you wanna have full control over that as well, it's very easy to do. Switch over to manual white balance and set your camera up. Fill the frame with something white and take a picture, then go into your settings and look for custom white balance. Your last image will pop up, click set your white balance, and your white balance will be set to wherever you are. With recording format, you usually want the highest recording format that your camera offers. With a large number of DSLRs, this is 1080p. It means that there are 1080 pixels high as there are 1920 pixels wide. The higher those numbers are, the more detailed your video is going to be. Along with what recording format you're using, you can also look at the frames per second. All moving images are made up of individual frames. With frames per second, you're choosing how many frames are being recorded per second. When you're watching any given movie, you're most likely watching it in 24 frames per second. This is more of a cinematic look because our eyes have been trained to watch movies in 24 frames per second. 60 frames per second is usually what home videos are recorded in. This is more of a realistic look and it also again is an artistic preference for what you want in the end. For me personally, I usually only use 24 frames per second if I'm recording something for a self-tape. And since our eyes are already adjusted to 24 frames per second, I feel like it might be more comfortable for the viewer. When I'm setting up a camera with a tripod, I always want the sensor height to be about my eye height. This makes sure that I have a jawline as well as proper eye line for the viewer. This angle is not as flat. When framing your camera, always make sure to follow the directions from the person asking you to do the self-tape. If they don't provide directions, I always try to follow the rule of thirds. So the rule of thirds is where the image is split up into three different sections, both vertically and horizontally. As you can see here, I try to put my eyes right around the top horizontal line. This is usually where a viewer's eyes want to go first in an image. On most DSLRs and camcorders, there's already a thread underneath the camera that allows it to connect to any tripod. If you're filming with an iPhone, you're going to have to buy an adapter to fit it to your tripod. Below this video, I'm gonna attach some links to some cameras and some adapters that you can look for. They're relatively cheap and great starter cameras to work with. All right, so that's it for the first video. I hope you all liked it. I just wanna put a little bit of disclaimer in here at the end. Some people may not agree with the opinions that I have regarding self-tapes, and that's fine. This is just how I film mine. If you figure out different ways that work for you, then absolutely do those. With filmmaking, it's always changing as we get new gear and new technology. These are truly only the basics of the settings that your camera can do, 
And the more you explore with your camera, the more you're going to learn and figure out what style is best for you. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.